Hey, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert, and I've had a request to do a VI test with Pro Tools 10 versus Pro Tools 11. Basically, one of the big selling features of Pro Tools 11 is its handling of virtual instruments, uh, because that's where the testing has come in the past, because on a 32-bit application, the instruments can't access the higher memory uh, it, that a 64-bit application can access, and so you're basically limited. Uh, so I'm, I've done this test basically and I wanted to do a like for like exactly the same and what I wanted to do was throw Omnisphere at it because Omnisphere has historically been a real memory hog. It's, it's a great way to test. It's a wonderful instrument but obviously it uses a lot of energy to do the sounds that it does. So let me tell you a bit about the background to the test. First I'll show you the Mac. So it's running on that Mac which is on 10.83, 2.8 gigahertz quad core Intel Xeon, 12 gigabytes, 1066, and I've got an SSD drive. So this session is actually sitting on a standard drive in my sessions drive. Uh, I've got the system usage open. Now let me tell you how my setup is as well. I've got this running at 1024 samples, and I'll tell you why in a minute, and you'll see why. Eight processors, 90%. I'm not going to tick the ignore clicks. I've also turned off the disk cache because I want those who are not going to use HD to see this as well. And I've got my delay compensation on maximum. And that is because I'm going to be using Vienna Ensemble Pro. And let me show you that in action. And that's hosting Omnisphere. And I've got 16 copies of it coming in. So 16 uh, instances of Omnisphere held by Vienna Ensemble Pro. The reason I've done that is right now is that you can't use Omnisphere because it's not AAX yet in Pro Tools 11. And so I'll be then opening this session in Pro Tools 11 to see how it handles. So we've got it at the moment, as I say, a process is 1024. Let's give it a play. Now this, so I've got 16 instances that are exactly the same, playing exactly the same stuff. Now what I've got here as well is just a VCA channel. That doesn't add anything to it. It just means that I can control my volume without the, uh, without burning anybody's ears off. So let's let's hit the play button, the space bar. And there it is. So it's playing that session. It's just every instrument's playing the same thing. And there's the meters going on there. So that's at 1024. Let's take it now down to 512 and see how low we can get this. So we can stay on eight processors at 512. So play it. And we're back to that old problem, uh, a, a 9171 error, hardware buffer issue. Doesn't matter how many times I press play, it's gonna be the same. There's nothing I can do about it. And we can see as well the CPU meter's going mad. Right then, now we're gonna shut this session and we're gonna open Pro Tools 11 and see how it does on that. In fact, what we'll also do, if it, if it's, it performs any better, then we'll add c carry on adding instances of this until we see, until we get to the same kind of result. So back in a second with Pro Tools 11 doing this. Right then, so welcome back. We are now in Pro Tools 11. There we go. Before I was in HD 10, now I'm in HD 11. Now, because of all the things I've done, such as switching off the disk cache in the playback engine and stuff, uh, let me show you the setup on this. So we're gonna go 1024 samples. We're gonna start from where we started. I've got dynamic plugin processing on, and as you can see, disk cache is switched off. So it's in the standard mode. All the other stuff I can't mess with anymore because the Avid audio engine does a lot more. So there's our system usage. Now it's low at the moment because uh, it's a dynamic processing that's going on. So that will start to creep up. You'll see it as it starts to play. So we are ready to go. So let's hit the play bar. So right now that's not broken a sweat yet. So let's go to our playback engine now and take that to 512 and see if that falls over at 512. So we'll stick that on. Give it a second to figure something out. It's creeping up a bit more now. Let's play that. And straight away, we can start to see the system is just starting to pile up. But still, no problem there. So, let's go to 256. Of course, the higher, the lower we go with this, the higher this will creep up. Allegedly. <laughs> so 256 seems to be better than 512 for some reason. Uh, I'm not complaining. 
Okay, let's go down to the next one, which is uh, 128. Now, if you remember in the Pro Tools 10 session, we wouldn't have got anywhere near this. It would have fallen over. So let's now go down to, we've got 128, let's go to 64. You can see I'm on a HD native system. See what this does. Oh, that starts to creep a bit more now. Now what we are starting to hear is a little bit of audio degradation. So just out of interest, what will happen if we go to 32 samples? Uh, this is really so straight away. You see that's going to launch us, that's kind of thinking about it. So, And we can hear the audio breaking up now uh, because the memory just isn't there to do that. So let's take this test in the other direction. Let's go back up to 1024, which was the stable setting in Pro Tools uh, 10 before. And let's go and I'm just going to save this for a second. It'll take a second just to save this because it's got 16 instances of VEP and that's why we've got a little bit of uh, the beach ball for a second. Let's tempt fate and double this lot. I'm going to duplicate this. So it's going to take a little while to do this because it's going to duplicate 16 channels of Omnisphere sitting in VNR Ensemble Pro. So it's going to take a little while. So press OK and leave it to it and we'll come back in a sec. Okay, so we've now loaded in an additional 16 tracks. So as you can see now, we've got 32 tracks of Omnisphere hosted by Vienna Ensemble Pro. Let's go back to our playback engine again. 1024 samples, the same settings. So let's play that and see how we get on with this. So we've, as you can see, we've started to see the system usage go up a bit. If you remember before, we could just about manage to play half of these at 1024. So we're now going to go to uh, down to 512, see what that does. But it, strangely enough, when we did the test before, when we hit 512, it did some odd things. In fact, it seemed to be running higher than when we went even lower. So it's creeping up now, but still stable, still rolling. As you can see, these processes have been managed by Pro Tools 11. Seems the processor 4 gets a hard time out of this. So let's go down again. Let's go down to 256, see what that does. And again, it's, it's, it's somewhat odd. For some reason, 512 seems to be one that it uh, doesn't favor. So let's see how far we can go again. I'm guessing this time when we go to 128, we're going to hear some breakup of sand and some degradation in sand because of the processing. Yep. But as you can see already, we're, we're seeing serious gains there. Uh, we have, say, a stable playback there at 256 samples, double the track count, and... Uh, All your tracks. So I hope that demo and that test has uh, given you some more insight into Pro Tools 11. As I say, you can download a trial, try it for yourself, open some sessions you've got in 10 because you can run them coexisting on the same platform. Run some in 10, run some in 11 and uh, let us know what happens for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.